let's just deal with all the proof texts that people use to spew their hatred towards same-sex couples, all right? We care about the truth, Bible truth. If you could refute it, that's what you'd be doing and instead of saying, well, you just want applause or you're just twisting the truth to fit your agenda. No, what has been happening is the man-made churches have been twisting the truth to fit their agenda, and then when it's challenged, you don't know what to do with it because you don't really care what the Bible says. You just care about your own traditions and doctrines. So if you care about what the Bible says, it's really not that difficult. Genesis chapter 2, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. That's true. God created Adam and Eve. He did not, let's get this straight, create Adam and Steve. He created Adam and Eve to procreate. People say that the reason that same-sex relationships are condemned there by God creating a man and a woman is because same-sex couples cannot procreate. Neither can 90-year-old couples. Okay, So people who are 80 years old, 90 years old, their mates die, they enter into a union, and they can't have kids. Does that mean that they can't be together? Marriage, relationship, love is not about procreating. That's one of the purposes of the male and female relationship at a certain age. But there are couples that get married all the time who, for various reasons, can't procreate. And you don't try to nullify their relationships. Procreation has nothing to do with it, except it did have to do with God creating a man and a woman in the beginning to procreate because all of us know enough about basic biology to know that somebody's got to be procreating. That doesn't mean everybody has to procreate, though, does it? Okay, so that has nothing to do with it. God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They were about, they had to have been, what, 25 to 35 years old probably. They had a bunch of kids. They lived a long time. But uh, that does not condemn the fact that older people can get married and it has nothing to do with same-sex couples. Not a thing. All right, so you can say it. I've heard it all my life. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Doesn't matter. All right, then you got Genesis 19. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We've already dealt with this one in at least three videos. But if you're not willing to let God tell you why he destroyed those cities, then nothing I say is going to matter. Just read Ezekiel 16 and verse 49, and God says, They were gluttonous. They were full of pride. They looked down upon the poor, and they committed detestable acts. Those detestable acts were acts of violence, and lust had nothing to do with same-sex couples in a committed relationship of love and commitment, consenting adults. Had nothing to do with that. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. We've dealt with this one. You're so clear that this verse condemns uh, same-sex couples. Well, the word effeminate means soft. So all people who are soft are going to hell. Does that mean that Mr. Rogers is in hell right now because he did not act like Charles Bronson or Clint Eastwood? Why don't you tell me what effeminate is? How effeminate can a person be? Now you say, I don't really know what that word means. That's right, you don't know, and there's just not enough evidence there to apply that to all people in the LGBTQ community. Is there? No, there's not. So I could see Paul, with as loving as he was, but he was always against hurting people. I could see uh, his idea of effeminate being a man pretending to be a woman in order to seduce someone, take advantage of them on, based on lust. Uh, you know, male prostitutes could be dealt with in that, in that verse. Anything, in other words, that has to do with hurting people, you could fit in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, because he doesn't list all of them. Just anything that hurts people, put it in there. All right? 1 Timothy 1 and verse 10, sodomites will not inherit the kingdom of God. Homosexuals is also... Uh, the word is, that's used in some translations in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and, and 1 Timothy 1, 10. The problem with sodomites and homosexuals is that those are interpretations. That's not what Paul said. Paul used a, a combination of words that had to do with uh, male betters of some kind. You say, well, I, what did exactly did he mean if he wasn't talking about all same-sex relationships? He was talking about any relationship, and he mentions heterosexuals and homosexual relationships there that hurt people. So any relationship that has to do with hurting people or abusing people would be condemned. We may not know specifically all that he meant by male betters. We just can just be sensible and understand that his readers knew and also that he was describing something so detestable there wasn't even a word to describe it. The idea that he was talking about same-sex monogamous <laughs> couples that didn't bother anybody who loved Jesus is ridiculous. All right, stop that kind of nonsense. Romans 1, 26 and 27, the men left the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another. Of course they did. That's evil. You, you look at Romans 1, 18 through 32, he's describing, it's easy to see, he is describing a group of people that are evil to their core, and they're 
activities were based on lust and deception and mocking God. We're not talking about same-sex couples who love Jesus or aren't bothering anybody. They're in relationships of love and commitment. No. You see, a person, he's not even dealing with, with, with sexual orientation at all. A person who has been, let's say a male who has been attracted to males his whole life, he can't leave the natural use of the woman because attraction to a woman is not what is natural for him. What is natural for him is to be attracted to males. So in order for a man to leave the natural use of a woman, he has to be a heterosexual. All right. So if a man turns from the natural use of a woman to have sex with a man, then he's just experimenting. He's just doing something based on lust. He's just he's sleeping around. He's looking for thrills. What is natural to him would be to be attracted to a woman. Same way with women. If a, if a woman leaves the natural use of a man, she has to be a heterosexual woman because that cannot apply to a lesbian who is attracted to females. And if you just say, okay, well, we don't know exactly what all Paul had in mind there. That's right, we don't, because this was written to specific people in the Roman Empire, and there were a lot of terrible things going on around them. That whole section is dealing with people who were involved in all sorts of abuse and problems and, and, and just living in just rampant sin, not talking about all same-sex couples. So just accept that. Anything that is evil and violent and hurts people, that's what Paul's against. Love, God is never against love. Then you got the verses from Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20. If you just go through and look at all of the prohibitions in Levitical law, you'd know that we shouldn't even be talking about anything in Leviticus. But there we've pointed out before, go see our videos on this. He talks, he condemns all sorts of terrible, terrible activities of a physical nature like necrophilia and bestiality and incest, and then to just think that all of a sudden just he just throws right in there uh, a monogamous couple, same-sex couple who loves Jesus. No, there's two different words for male there, and what he is very likely has in mind is uh, what we know today as pedophilia. You ask an evangelical, does the Bible condemn pedophilia? He'll say, not specifically, but there are principles. I say, wrong. It does condemn it directly. And it does it in, in Leviticus 18. And that doesn't mean I understand everything about the Levitical law. No one does. Or the penalties associated therewith. You could ask me questions I can't answer. Sure, you can. I don't live under the Levitical law. No one today lives under the Levitical law, no matter what they think. You cannot be under that law. All right, so here's the thing you need to keep in mind about our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters scattered throughout the LGBTQ community. Here's what you need to understand. Romans 13. Owe no one anything except to love one another. He who loves another has fulfilled the law. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Any relationships that are based on hurting people and doing harm to a neighbor are sinful. Any relationships that are based on love and commitment and faithfulness and that are seeking to honor God, those aren't sinful. Care if you like it or not. Nobody cares if you like it or not. Most of all, God doesn't care if you like it or not. All that matters is what his word says.